For the time being, though, let's shift focus. Goldrich Properties, that's a stock on our radar. My colleague, Sonal Butra, spoke to Gaurav Pandey, the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Goldrich Properties, in his first ever TV interview after taking over as MD and CEO. She began by asking him about the land acquisition spree in Gurugram, as well as Kolkata, and the company's business development pipeline. Let's listen in to what he had to tell Sonal. Uh, you know, Godrish Properties, as you rightly said, is in a very exciting stage where we're looking at investment opportunities across key geographies where we operate. Uh, last financial year, we did close to about 80 transactions. Uh, our guidance to the market was adding 15,000 crores worth of booking value logged in projects. And we did close to about 32,000 crores uh, worth of uh, booking value logged in to 18 transactions. And we're very confident that this will fuel the kind of profitable growth that we are envisioning for ourselves. And we're continuing that momentum, but selectively in areas where we believe there is very strong demand. And we are seeing uh, you know, consistent great sales momentum, reducing our inventory in those markets. And uh, the recent ones, you're right, the two transaction quarter one we've done, which we've kind of already announced, one is in Kolkata, a very prime micro market of Kolkata in New Alipur, uh, close to about 7.44 acres of a transaction, leading to about 1200 crores of potential top line, uh, and uh, another transaction, which is in Gurgaon. So very excited on the growth momentum we set ourselves for. Okay, so the 15,000 crore rupees of uh, development value that you've guided for, uh, do you think, uh, uh, first of all, how much of that have you done in quarter one already? And do you think, last, uh, like last year, there is a possibility of exceeding that as well? Uh, you know, so essentially the way we are driven by uh, business development opportunities is out of market, uh, you know, what kind of opportunity you get to see in market. Uh, while we, did, we have given a guidance of about 15,000 crores, but our efforts are not necessarily targeting uh, to necessarily either get that or even exceed that. Uh, we are driven by what kind of underwriting assumptions we are very confident upon and what kind of uh, pricing we are getting from a land market point of view. So at the moment, it looks very bright for us. Uh, we've identified certain micro markets in India where we want to deepen our presence or get into within the four key geographies where we operate. So within that, uh, reasonably confident that our trajectory will continue. Okay, all right. So I'll come back to that in just a bit. But when you spoke about land acquisition, at least in FI23, Gozrish Properties was one uh, company which uh, saw the highest land acquisition, at least in the organized space. And this is coming at a time when, you know, 2021, 2020, uh, where companies spoke of an asset light model. What is the strategy here right now? And in terms of pricing as well, how does it differ uh, pre-COVID versus now when it comes to land acquisition? See, if you see, take a step back and see overall, you know, real estate market because land buying decisions are, uh, you know, kind of guided by what you see as opportunities to create impact in the real estate cycle where you operate. So pre-COVID, largely for about 10 to 12 years, we were operating in a very bearish real estate market and which is a very uh, typical of cyclical market that real estate does see. Uh, Post-COVID, we saw the uh, first stage of growth uh, to uh, another 10 years of our up cycle. And we're at a very early stage right now, and we see that there is good pricing uh, we're able to kind of uh, achieve in terms of projects that we are selling in the geographies we operate, which has led to a, a sort of a very focused approach on what kind of investment opportunities we would like to funnel and kind of accentuate our growth, uh, both through profitability and booking value. Now, uh, coming to your uh, question on the structure of the transaction asset light versus outright transactions, we are frankly not uh, governed by uh, the structure construct right now. What we are guided by is the principles of uh, return thresholds that we want to secure for ourselves. And uh, in certain sensitivity analysis, we run what kind of uh, pricing and margins we will to achieve even in different kinds of market scenarios. We are seeing currently, uh, coincidentally, those transactions happen to be outright. Uh, that is not, is frankly, uh, demonstrating out of our conscious strategy to outright only. We have a good pipeline of even JD projects. It is just that we did a couple of bid participations and we won those bid participations which were led by government itself. And we saw great uh, projects in certain geographies where landowners were keen to do it through an outright transaction, which has uh, led to the kind of growth. And fortunately, because of this and being at the start of an upcycle, our ability to command better margins 
because our economic interest in each of these projects happens to be larger, we will have a potential upside coming from it. But uh, honestly, it was not driven out of construct to do only outrights, just pure market opportunities and what we can create as win-win for ourselves and land owners. Okay, that makes sense and that explains a lot as well because uh, land acquisition uh, is something that is very specific to the cycle that you're in as well. Uh, take that point. Uh, Gaurav, uh, let's talk about cash flows because quarter four was really good for your cash flows, record high there. But I was looking at the quarterly trend. Operating cash flows have been around 20 to 22% of the total cash flows. Now that surged to 50% in quarter four. First, what led to that? Uh, what is the cash flow cycling look, cycle looking like? And whatever CapEx that you have in place coming ahead as well, will it be funded uh, via internal accruals? Will you be taking more debt for that? What is the plan there? Uh, see, essentially, if you see our business has uh, elements of cash inflow planned from two, three variables. One is your ability to launch a project on time. Uh, then you construct a project. You get to see if you sell a particular phase, uh, by about 60% plus within a launch. And if you have uh, right kind of payment plans, uh, largely when a project is about 60 to 70% uh, plus of construction, you start hitting uh, operating cash flow positive. Uh, that's the typical, typical thumb rule. Of course, there are projects where it tends to be a little faster and some exceptions, uh, even from a later point of view. Uh, and most of it, if you see why it happened on Q4 is because we had very heavy OC calendar in quarter four of previous financial year. So, of course, when your uh, operating cash flows are governed by your COC or cost of construction is covered, you're enjoying that surplus operating cash flows in quarter four. That's typical of the nature of business we have. It is more lumpy towards H2. Uh, yeah. So, and from a uh, pure cash flow planning point of view, we are largely looking at it from an internal accruals and a combination of uh, you know projects which we have launched earlier a uh, couple of years back. Uh, which have driven OC and some phases are left. We're completing those and we're getting good surplus uh, cash flow. And we are very confident and uh, positive that this year will continue to be a very exciting year for us. In fact, if you notice, uh, Godrish Properties last year delivered close to about 8,900 crores and 90 crores of uh, sort of collections number, which is higher than the booking value number of the previous financial year, which is a very interesting aberration, purely reflecting from great collections efficiency and, uh, you know, faster con construction completion, giving us those kind of collections and therefore positive operating cash flows. Okay. And it is important for real estate companies, right? The collections that you get, the cash flows as well, because that is very important for investors to track as well. A uh, couple of more uh, macro level questions that I wanted to understand from you, because you are a market leader. Um, what is the pricing scenario right now? We've seen that there is a pause in interest rates, so to say. Uh, but do you think you will be able to push price hikes further or the price hikes that have happened in the last two to three years will consolidate at these levels? Uh, see, again, pricing, if you see, is very characteristic of different micro markets in the cities we operate. So if you see uh, in the last two odd years, NCR has been leading the price appreciation uh, chart for us and for most developers operating out of that market. And uh, there is a good continued trend. We are seeing uh, sort of a secular trend in the micro markets of other geographies, but not to the accelerated level that we have witnessed in the North market, so as to speak. So first, there is a reasonable probability to say that uh, given there is such a strong demand uh, for end user driven products in good micro markets, it's a fair case to assume that there is a reasonable probability that price to some extent uh, will continue to grow. To what extent it will depend upon, frankly, product location and timing of, of, of the cycle that we operate. But uh, till now, we've been able to demonstrate consistent price increase and consistent sales increase last financial year. So with, with some cautious optimism, I would say, uh, I think we are at the right cycle where uh, there is some amount of good upsides if market continues what it's presenting as opportunities right now. Interesting conversation there with Sonal and Godrej Properties. Get into a break. On the other side, we'll talk one of the big movers of the day. That's Madison Sumi. The stock has surged 8.3% following the acquisition of Honda's subsidiary, Yachio's four-wheeler business. Uh, we'll be joined by the top management of Samvardhan Madison International on the other side.